My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. Hi, I'm CWPD Rose Amador LeBeau. I'm here with Craig Pasqua, my co-host, and we are Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. So we have with us Tony Redhouse. Again, yes, again. again. I'm so I'm excited so well -like. to hear what he's up to. And, and there's quite a bit. I don't know how we, he keeps up with everything, but yeah. welcome, Tony. Thank and you very Tony's much. visiting us from Tucson, Arizona. Yes. I bet you our weather is better. I like. I actually like the, cool, like the, the cool, the cool winds. Yeah. Oh, you have cool winds. Yeah, here. Yeah, it's here. Just a little bit warmer. Oh, I think yeah. we have the best weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hot over there for me, but yeah. um, you probably get used to it, right? Yes, it's home to me. It's home. Monterey. So, uh -huh. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Monterey is a, is part of your home too. That's where yeah, I was that's born. Very cool. Actually, born in Monterey General Hospital. So you're local. Yeah, and that was. Uh, it'll be. Close to 60 years ago, yeah. So, wow. so this my, is your birthday tour. My birthday tour, it, yeah. My birthday is June 9th. Oh, happy so birthday! I'm celebrating a special tour this year. And and you're out here visiting for Tony Red House Day, I know. Yes. So May congratulations 25th. on that. And you have been working on a documentary. Yes. Yes, I've been on one uh, a film documentary with uh, Marilyn Slitz and Deepak Chopra. Uh, Previously in 2014, that was released. It was called "Death Makes Life Possible," and it was uh, interviewing me about my perspectives on life, death, transitions, hospice, and actually filming me doing a rite of passage on a, a hospice patient. Uh, this this year, we're working on another film. I'm working with uh, Frances Causey, who is a uh, noted uh, film documentary maker. Uh, she is directing and helping produce this um, film called "Is Your Story Making You Sick." And it is uh, produced by skillfullyaware.com and Mark Pirtle. And uh, it is bringing in eight participants who have volunteered to be worked on uh, and to receive some healing and therapy uh, during a, a retreats that they're doing in Tubac, Arizona. And so they're going through different modalities, uh, different types of treatment uh, with different therapists and different styles of therapy. And I'm one of the therapists that are working with them in a Native American, very simple, symbolic, uh, experiential uh, way, whereas a lot of the other type of modalities are very much uh, uh, trained, schooling type of therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very much experiential using sound and using uh, rites of passage. Are they going to do like a comparison or what it was? No, it's just going to, we're, we're actually combining uh, different segments together. I'm, I'm doing some rites of passage, taking the, the clients into a dream state, which is actually what the film is about. We're, we're returning them back to a lucid dream, dream state where they begin to remember years ago when they went through therapy. And so they're going to be reliving the therapy that they were experiencing that helped them to heal and help them to change the story that many times we accept is, okay, this is the way it's gonna be, this mm -hmm. is the way I came into the world, I'm, you know, it was my, my family was screwed up, and my, the way I came into this world was, I'm just gonna deal with it, and I'm just gonna accept it. Right. Well, this is about changing the story, so resetting it. 
Uh, so it's, it's really kind of a very beautiful uh, way of looking at life and how we can change our destiny, actually. A lot of people, I think, they bring up, they go for what's safe, and they build walls around them. Mm -hmm. And so in the process, in order to get back, you have to break down some walls. Yes, yes. It's uh, very much, and what I'm using a lot in, in my teachings is Native American symbolism. And, and as a hoop dancer, eagle dancer, a lot of uh, story comes from, from those type of uh, uh, sharing. Uh, the eagle, you know, I mean, to jump for an eagle, when it, when it becomes mature and mom and dad stop feeding it, and it's in that nest 80 feet in the air in a pine tree, and it's safe, secure, there's no predators, it's being fed, it's warm, it's comfortable, maybe they even line it with soft downy feathers, you know? So it's, it's a comfort, comfort zone, the nest. Mm -hmm. But that eagle, when it becomes a teenager, says, hey, you know what, I'm getting hungry, mom and dad are not feeding me now, so I think I need to jump out, and I need to take a risk, and I need to drop down out of this nest 80 feet in the air down into nothingness because I want to begin soaring so that I can find nourishment for my soul. So we as human beings, We'll find ourselves in comfort zones, and it could be a relationship, it could be a career, it could be a geographical location, or we're just there because it's comfortable, it's all that we know, it's what mom and dad have done, it's what you know our families have done, and it's what society wants us to do, so we just stay there, but we are dried up inside because we are no longer nourished, and we're not feeling any vibrancy and any passion in life. And so it takes a risk for us actually to jump out of the nest even though it's scary, mm -hmm. and we don't know exactly what we're, where we're going to land, uh, and we're not sure whether we're going to be able to soar, but we have to take that risk and jump out of the nest, then we begin to spread our wings, and then we begin soaring to our highest dreams. So what you're saying is true. Things can become comfortable, but when they no longer give us life, then it's just a comfort zone. So how do you find that balance? The balance is, is pretty simple as far as in, in, once again, Native American tradition, the circle of life is really a beautiful uh, format for us to look at. Because in the beginning, as we, as we know, in the east direction is our birth, the south direction is our adolescent, the west direction is our middle ages where we go through the dark times, the sunsets, and we go through changes and reassessment, and the north is that our time of seniors and our time of our elder years where we begin to soar we begin to just float and we begin to let go of things and so this this is a beautiful cycle of chronologically of our age okay but within that cycle there are also four aspects of our human life so we have our mind where the sun rises so we have clarity new information like a new day and the south direction is that time of summer, which is a time of harvest and a time of our physical life, our strength, our vitality. Uh, just like teenagers, we begin to really develop quickly, academically and scholastically and physically, we become more like men and women. And so this is a time of our physical aspect. The west is where the sun sets, and that time, place of darkness is usually where we have ceremony. In the darkness is where we see the true light. Because when you go into a sweat lodge, there's not lights. There's not things going on. It's completely dark, so we're focusing on the soul. So this is a place of prayer. This is a place of the spirit. So we have our mind, our body, our soul, and we have all of our relationships to be at peace with all of our relationships. Everybody, every animal, every tree, just as we teach, we're one with all things. And so this, to maintain balance, we have our mind, our body, our soul, and all of our relationships at peace and healthy and develop. So that creates a healthy circle, which allows us to be able to go around smoothly. So our personal balance is so important because what happens is when we unite with other people, whether it's a family, whether it's a, whether it's a career, whether it's a job, and we unite with other people, and their circles are also somewhat in balance, what happens is we come together. And when we come together because we are in balance, what happens is our circle unites, and we create something larger than ourselves. And then we create the universe, which is in harmony. 
So from personal balance results universal harmony. We want harmony in the world. We're talking about it all the time. You know, let's be let's be more uh, ecologically conscious about things. You know, let's let's live more uh, in respect to nature. We want to be one with everything. We want harmony. But we can't do that <laughs> unless we first find personal balance in our own life first. Going back to the the circle of life here. Say there is an imbalance with, well, say your family. Yeah. Many people have problems with their family. Right. And that. And to me, it seems if you can't resolve, you know, what's going on with your family life, then there is going to be an imbalance. Mm -hmm. And how do you get back to centered? Exactly. Exactly. So if you want to find the answers to anything happening in your life, whether it's your marriage, whether it's the career, whether it's your family, relationships, wherever you're at in life, find yourself wherever you're at in life, whether you're in childhood, teenage years, adult years, middle ages, senior years, and just turn the clock back. You want to find the answers to anything? Go back and go back to the beginning. You're going to find the answers here in the beginning. So once you find the answers in the beginning, how we came into this world, and like you said, the family that imprinted on us, how mom and dad treated us, how we were raised, that's going to, that's going to dictate many things, how we, the story is going to be, and it's going to affect how we react and respond to all other situations. So if you go back, to the beginning, you can reset the foundation. So as imperfect as mom and dad, brothers and sisters, and everything else I've been, if we go back here and reset this with unconditional love and let the heartbeat be unconditional love, then we can reset the whole foundation. That's the only way we can do it. We stop looking at people and personally being affected by them in situations, and we go deeper and we say, okay, I'm going to go back to the love that brought me to this earth in the first, in the first place. So that may involve forgetting everything that's happened up to that point, or forgiving things, and looking, letting go. Actually looking at this whole journey that we're on as an illusion. Mm. Okay, we, we think this is really what this world is about. That everything we see, that the way things appear is really the reality. But if you go deeper, if you go to the consciousness behind all of this, underneath everything, the consciousness is that deja vu, that synchronicity, all of those glimpses that we get in our dreams of something deeper, then that begins to show us that we can actually go back to the beginning, we can reset the foundation, tap into that consciousness that everybody's talking about, mm -hmm. which is connecting all the dots behind the scenes, and not take this so personally. Okay, we hear this all the time. You know, don't take things so personal. That's what it's saying, is you go back and, and look deeper into what really has brought us to this world in the first place and the purpose that we're here. So what do dreams mean? What is dreams are symbolic. I teach dream catcher classes. In fact, I'll be doing that at East West Bookstore, making your own personal dream catcher. Dreams are a reflection. If you think about life, <clears throat> we have two circles. We have the earthly and we have the spiritual. All the things on the earth, survival, you know, taking care of business, uh, our nourishment, our strength, uh, working, taking care of responsibilities, very important. And we have also in the heavens our visions, our dreams, our intuition. And so we have two worlds. If we, if we have one foot on the earth and one foot in the heavens every day, then we have access to both worlds and they become one. As Native Americans have taught forever that, you know, the, everything is one. There's no separation between our conscious thinking and our dream life. So actually dreams are simply a reflection. They're a filter. They're a there's something that is filtered through when our mind is asleep, the conscious mind is asleep. Then the spirit can say, hey, now your mind is out of the way, and now I can tell you exactly what you need to know. So a dream is going to be symbolic, many times not literal. But once you start writing them down and you start seeing what the dreams mean, like if I'm in a car, it doesn't mean I'm in a car. It means it's a vehicle to carry my gift. Okay. If I have a dream about my brother, it doesn't mean my brother's in a dream. It means it's something personal, very familiar. So once, after a while, I begin to see what these triggers are in my dreams. Then I can understand very clearly what they are. So dreams are actually a reflection of what we're thinking about during the day and what the state of our life is right now is how, what you're going to feel when you have a dream. This is how I feel about my life. This is how I feel about this dream in this scenario that I'm in. So it's going to be a reflection of your daily life. Wow. And 
you said you work with cancer patients. Mm -hmm. How do you help them? I use sound healing. So I'm a Native American sound healer. My grandfather was a medicine man, so I've chosen to use sound, my music, as a medicine, okay? Bringing it down to a very simple sound, the voice, the drum, and the flute, were the ancient forms of expression in Native American culture, the voice, the drum, and the flute. Using those simple sounds have a way that speak to the body and the cells. All of us, all of our ancestors used the drum, the voice, and the flute. And so when we hear those sounds, we go back and say, oh, this feels true to me. This feels real to me. Wow. And then all of the complications, all of the illusions, all of the things that we think are so real disappear, and we come back down to a heartbeat. And when I use sound, it captures the senses. So I use a drum on somebody's, somebody's body. When they're laying there, they're going to feel that heartbeat. And when I have them relaxing and feeling that heartbeat, then their mind their ears, the cells in their body, are all going to sense and feel this heartbeat. Then they're going to forget everything else, and then I'm able to speak to them and guide them to a very simple place, back to their truth. Then they're able to see what their life really is, not all of the complications. So something as simple as this grabs the attention of mind, body, and soul, and can unite it. Wow. Well, I'm looking forward to listening to your music today. Um, I know you have a few CDs out there, all wonderful. And what is your website again, Tony? TonyRedhouse.net. And I'm also on Facebook.com. Yeah, on Facebook, too. But all of your CDs, I know I play them in the office. <laughs> <laughs> and they're very relaxing. So I'm looking forward to listening to the music. And you will, too. Thank you for joining us. Native Voice TV, like us on Facebook, and you'll like Tony's music as well.
Oh, 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 oh,